Hi, my name is Giorgio Camozzi. I'm a computer science student at the University of Fribourg in Switzerland. And today I'm going to present to you our paper, Multidimensional Analysis of Blockchain Data Using an ETL-Based Approach. Let's start off with our motivation. Our goal was to analyze transaction data of large and complex blockchains such as Ethereum. Existing solutions such as block explorers usually focus on specific data. For example, they might focus on monetary transfers or smart contracts. In our research, we established a lack of programs and processes to analyze blockchain data over user-defined dimensions and aggregations. So the question we asked ourselves was, how can we analyze any transaction over any dimension? For example, how can we find out more about communities of users or the volume of transferred funds for our smart contract application? The answer we came up with was data warehousing. But before we move on, let's look at some fundamentals first. The first thing you should all be familiar with is the concept of blockchains. In its simplest form, a blockchain is a peer-to-peer -peer network storing a distributed ledger. This ledger is kept up to date by all the participants in the network. The ledger consists of blocks. And these blocks, in turn, among other information, contain transaction data. One key and important characteristic of blockchains is that they are nearly mutable. I say nearly because in some corner cases, it might be possible to change the ledger. This near immutability is achieved through a chain-like structure, here shown in blue, where the hash of a parent block is included into the child block. This forms an immutable transaction history. The second foundational topic is that of data warehousing and extraction transformation loading processes. Data warehousing is a concept stemming from business intelligence. In our case, the data warehouse is where all the transaction and general blockchain data is stored. A so-called extraction transformation loading process, ETL for short, is used to consolidate information from various sources, uh, transform that data, and load it into one data store. This data store is often a multidimensional model of some kind. The star schema is one example of such a multidimensional model. It stores information in dimensions connected through a fact table. In this case, we see a fact table containing the primary keys of each dimension and the four-dimension transaction, block, date, and time. It looks a bit like a star, that's why it's called the star schema. Here we see the data analysis setup. A node running a blockchain client is synchronizing the blockchain and verifying each transaction. In our case, this is Open Ethereum for the Ethereum blockchain. The data is then extracted from the node and stored in a temporary extraction schema. Later on, it is moved into a transformation schema where transformation steps are carried out um, in order to be able to aggregate data and derive further information from the extracted data. This can be, for example, account balances or the weekday of a transaction. All of this data is then loaded into a star schema and it is ready to be curated by the user. The final star schema then looks like this. In the middle is the fact table containing all primary keys of the dimension tables. These primary keys together form a composite primary key for each entry in the fact table. We chose to have six dimensions. We have a transaction, block, time, date, and an account dimension. This latter one is doubly referenced in the account from and account to field in the fact table. Now let's move on to the technical implementation and use case. The whole workflow was implemented using Open Ethereum to synchronize the Ethereum blockchain and PostgreSQL server to store all of the data. The Ethereum data analysis scripts that were created are available on GitHub and they in turn use Ethereum ETL, which is another set of scripts also available on GitHub. A demonstration was shown through the research coin use case and a uh, research coin is an ERC20 token that is used as an incentive to engage on Research Hub, which is an online publishing platform for research publications. What are the strengths of this approach? Well, one advantage of such a star schema compared to a normalized schema is that we achieve faster read times as fewer join operations are required and fewer to no transformation steps are needed. A further advantage is the high flexibility provided by the multiple dimensions when curing, as well as the simplicity of the queries. 
This makes the whole process very user-friendly. Since the concepts described in the paper are rather generic, the whole approach can be extended and adapted at will, making it future-proof and valid for many different blockchains. There are some limitations, though. One um, includes the fact that the determined account balances are not fully accurate, as, for example, internal transactions are not considered. This could be solved by extending the whole process and also extracting traces. The process is also very time and resource intensive, as a synchronization of a full node requires around 700 gigabytes of space. Additionally, 300 to 400 gigabytes of data are needed for the PostgreSQL database, in our case, with the data that we used. And the synchronization, depending on the used hardware, can take up to several months. Finally, the scripts, as of now, are not directly compatible with other blockchains. They must first be adapted, but the core principles stay the same. Now we're going to look at a little live demo where we show some queries being carried out. OK, so here we are on the papers repository on GitHub. And this is the ETH data analysis scripts. They can be found on github.com slash grgcmc slash ETH data analysis with hyphens in between. Uh, here we have all the information you might want to, um, you might need to set up the, the whole, to replicate the whole uh, process and the whole setup that we use during our research. And you see also some examples. Uh, you see the star schema and you see some examples of queries that are possible. Okay, so here we are in data grip and we can look at some queries. Um, we only looked at the, for the research, we only looked at the transactions done in June 2021. And here we can see the fact table, just a generic, a very simple, simple query just to uh, show you how the fact table looks like, where we have the block ID, the transaction ID, the count from, account to addresses, date and time. And uh, it's all of the transactions. We might want to count them just to check how many transactions there were in June 2021. Um, and we can see that there are, and we can see that there are um, 36, more than 36 million transactions that were made in June 2021. So just one month, uh, it's a lot of data. Now let's look at the number of transactions that were made to the smart contract that we looked at in our use case um, analysis. Uh, that is the address of the research coin smart contract. Uh, it looks like there's 29 transactions that were made to the research coin um, smart contract in June 2021, which is not a lot. If you, can, if you look at that, there are 36 million in total. Um, and let's break down those 29 transactions and see uh, grouped by method ID, how many there are of each method ID. These are ERC20 method calls uh, that, or method IDs. Uh, so they, they are standardized. Okay, so it's done. It took two minutes, 23 seconds. And now we know that there were 15 transactions that were made uh, calling this method ID here and 14 transactions that were made calling this method ID here. You can look them up online and you will see that one is the proof and one is a transfer. A method call to approve a transaction or transfer um, coins. Okay, so now let's look at one last uh, query. We're going to look at the average number of transactions in one block on a daily basis. So a daily average of transactions per block. Here we are after 18 seconds and we have our results. We have each day in June 2021 and on June 1st, there were 198.59 transactions uh, on average in each block. We might want to take this data, for example, just to visualize it. We might just want to load it into something like OnlyOffice, whatever, just to plot it real quick. And we see that the number of transactions over days are quite stable, actually. We also looked at the same statistic back in 2015-16, and there we were around four, five, six transactions per block on average. And now we are around 200. So the daily usage has gone um, 
way up. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I will see you soon. Bye.